Deriving the integrated rate laws is what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. And just a quick reminder from the last lesson when we talked about calculations with integrated rate laws is that most of you are not on the hook for deriving these. It does involve calculus. They call them integrated rate laws because we're going to take an integral along the way. So most of you are not on the hook for this. If you're just curious or if you're one of the very small minority of Gen Chem students that need this, great. That's what I'm going over this for you, but most of you probably don't need this. All right, so for a zero order reactant, uh, there's a, the integrated rate law. For first order, there it is. And for the second order, there it is. What I want to remind you of is the rate expression. So if I've got a simple reaction of A going to B in all three cases, then a valid rate expression for the reactant A would be negative, make it negative for reactants you might call, change in concentration A over change in time. The rate law is just simply rate equals K. You might recall it for a zero order implies that you've got the reactant to the zero power but anything to the zero power is one and anything times one is itself, which means that it's essentially just rate equals K. For first order, it means the exponent is a one. And so the rate order would be rate equals K times A. And then finally for second order, oh, I missed a two here. It would be the exponent of two. It'd be rate equals K times A squared. And so notice the rate expression is equal to the rate. The rate law is equal to the rate. Now the rate expression is a way of measuring the rate of the reaction, whereas the rate law is a way of predicting the rate of the reaction. But they're both equal to the rate, which means they're equal to each other. And that's kind of the key of what we're going to look here. So we're going to have negative change in the concentration of A over change in time equals K here. So, But what we're going to do is we're going to look at this instead of these deltas, which assumes we've already kind of taken some sort of integral along the way here. We're actually, from a calculus standpoint, gonna look at this as dA dt. How fun does that look? So same thing here, negative d concentration of A dt equals k times A. And then finally over here, we're gonna have negative d concentration of A dt equals k a squared. And so I just took the rate expression and set it equal to the rate law. And this is what we call a differential equation. Every one of these is a differential equation. So because we've got two different variables, we're looking at the change at at the same time. And one way, a very common way to solve these differential equations, is what we call the separation of variables, where we get all the a's and da's on one side of the equation and all the t's and dt's on the other side of the equation. So and that separates the variables. And so in this first one, what we're going to do here is we're going to get da all by itself here and put everything else on the other side. So we're going to have negative k dt. And then we'll take the integral of both sides. And so the integral of dA, and we're going to do this from some initial concentration. So we'll do this from A initial to A final, or A at time t. And so it's a definite integral. And then on this side, we're taking the, uh, the integral with respect to time as the variable from 0 to time t. So these are definite integrals. Now the integral of dA is just A. And in this case, with just plain old A, it's from initial to final. And so we'll have concentration of A from A initial to A at time t. And this is going to equal on the other side of the equation here, integral of dt, because the k is just a constant and pulls out in front of the integral, is just t. And so it's negative kt from 0 to time t. And so these are definite integrals. And so in this case, A from A0 to AT is just final minus initial. And so we're going to get A at time t minus a naught equals negative kt. And if you notice, if we just add a naught to the other side, you get your integrated rate law for a zero order reaction. Now, a little bit different story here. Now, instead of just plain old k, we have k times a for a first order reaction. And so when we do this process of separation of variables, we got to get this a over with the da's and the dt on the other side. And so in this case, we're going to have 1 over a dA equals negative k dt. And so still going to take the integral of both sides. So we've done our separation of variables. Now we'll integrate this side with respect to a, this side with respect to t. And it turns out the integral of a is natural log. And again, these are definite integrals. We're going from a initial to a at time t and from time 0 to time t. And so this is going to get us natural log 
of A, and again from A initial to A at time T, and that's gonna equal on the other side. Again, pull the negative K out in front, and the integral of T, dt is just, again, plain old T, and again, from time zero to time T. And so here we're gonna have, again, when you do the definite integral, it's just final minus initial. And so here we're gonna get ln of A at time T minus ln of A initial equals, and in this case, T final is T, and T initial is zero, and so this, the minus the zero part just cancels out, and so you're just left with negative KT. And once again, you can see that if we just add ln of A naught to the other side, you end up with that first order integrated rate law. Similarly for second order here, we'll do our separation of variables. And so we're gonna get one over a squared. So I'm gonna divide by a squared to get this on the same side as the dA. And I'll move the dt to the other side as well as the negative sign here. And we're gonna get negative k dt. And once again, once we've separated our variables, we'll take the integral of both sides. They're definite integrals from a initial to a at time t and from zero to time t. And now the integral of one over a squared, uh, you might recall, and that's the same thing as a to the negative two. Well, when you take an integral, the power goes one more positive. And so for a to the negative two, well, then it's gonna be a to the negative one. So, and then you have to divide by that power, that negative one. And so in this case, you're gonna get negative one over a from a initial to a at time t, and this is gonna equal negative kt from zero to t. And once again, you go and insert, you know, final minus initial back in and rearrange some negative signs, and lo and behold, you get your second order integrated rate law, same way we did the first and the zero. So that's how they're derived. And again, this is a process, it's, it's technically not even something that's formally calculus, but it's a, a process of solving differential equations that uses calculus. And so sometimes you'll see this in calculus, sometimes you won't actually, and you won't even see it until you take a differential equations class. So, but this is where they're derived from. Most of you are not on the hook for this. So if this doesn't seem familiar or whatever, no worries, you're probably not on the hook for this. And so uh, for those of you that were curious or for the very small minority of that were uh, on the hook for this, I hope this helps. Happy studying.